we begin on the distant shores of Eritrea in the Horn of Africa. It is a country coming to terms with peace after a bitter war of independence. With a fragile economy and an unforgiving climate, this is a country struggling to produce enough food to feed its own people. But hope for the future now lies in a plant that can grow in seawater and a Japanese-American who's devoting his life to helping this country back on its feet. The story of Eritrea's struggle for independence is one of the most remarkable in modern history. As a former Italian colony, Eritrea was supposed to coexist as part of a federation with Ethiopia in 1952. But anxious to secure access to the Red Sea, the Ethiopians began what was effectively a military occupation, dissolving the Eritrean parliament, abolishing the free press, and forbidding indigenous languages in schools. In the 1980s, as the Eritrean rebels fought back, the region was hit by a hideous famine. This attracted the international press, and a Japanese-American called Gordon Sato, a retired molecular biologist. I came here in 1987 because of the uh, Ethiopian famine. I looked into the matter and found it was mostly Eritrean famine. The treatment of Eritreans by Ethiopians is just unjust, all right? And um, I guess injustice rankles me, all right? Uh, I would say maybe in part because of my early childhood experience. As the son of a Japanese immigrant living in America, Sato had experienced persecution himself. When Japan joined the Second World War, he and thousands of other American citizens were rounded up and confined to a notorious internment camp in the Californian desert called Manzanar. A sense of injustice has stayed with Sato throughout his life. To this day, uh, I call a project, uh, the Manzanar Project, in, uh, because I want to uh, memorialize Manzanar. Uh, I like to show that, uh, you know, we weren't um, people to throw on the garbage dump. We were people of value. Uh, and I think the effect on me must have been very great without me really realizing it, because I've almost from the start, I decided this is the Manzanar project. The war in Eritrea ended with victory in 1991, but the conflict had left the country and the economy in ruin. When the war ended, what I hoped to do was contribute to the economic development of this country. Sato's job was not an easy one. In this harsh climate, the land had few resources he could use. What it has is a huge expanse of desert. And it has sunshine and the sea and it's these things that we hope to exploit. And that's why we develop the idea of growing plants with seawater. Sato was confident he could use the sea to grow fodder for animals and produce meat to feed the country that way. What he needed was a plant that was both nutritious and able to grow in salt water. The first time I saw mangroves was when I came to Eritrea. And I guess I just looked at them and thought about it. And then I observed camels chomping on mangroves. Uh, so I figured if a camel can do it, a goat and a sheep and a cow can do it. Sato discovered that mangrove leaves are rich in protein, making them ideal for cattle fodder. But as mangroves grow on the coastal flats, these leaves fall into the sea and are literally washed away. Our plans are not to let the leaves grow old and drop. We view mangrove trees not as trees anymore, but as a perennial pasture. And our plan is to 
cut the leaves and feed them to sheep and goats. Uh, in a while, we should be able to produce more sheep and goats than the people can eat. Uh, I think they'll have to sell a lot of the meat, which is expensive, and buy beans. Okay, and this way I think they can produce enough food for the whole country. To feed the whole country, Sato would need to grow mangroves all along the Eritrean coast. But mangroves only grow naturally where rivers enter the sea, bringing in vital minerals. So he would have to provide these artificially elsewhere. In a research center in the town of Masawa, he examined the composition of seawater and discovered that nitrogen, phosphorus, and iron, crucial for mangrove growth, were all missing. Using fertilizer to provide these, Sato began experimenting on a barren stretch of waterfront. This is the area where the Manzanar project really started. Uh, what we did was we planted trees in this area where trees had never grown before. It took us some time to discover that we had to bury a bag of nitrogen, phosphorus, and leave a piece of iron. And when we do that, these trees are growing at, at a very fast uh, clip. These quick sprouting trees are harvested regularly for the eagerly awaiting animals, providing them with vital proteins. Satisfied that both his trees and his animals were growing according to plan, Sato began an extensive planting program. In 2001, he planted 40,000 mangrove trees on the coast near the village of Hergigo. First thing in the morning, Sato's planting team head out for another day on the mudflats. The mangroves have been grown in a nursery to help develop the fragile root systems that will be critical for their survival here. Each tree is bedded in by hand, and alongside it, a bag of fertilizer is buried. This contains diammonium phosphate and urea, which will provide phosphorus and nitrogen in exactly the right quantities. Holes have been pierced in each bag, which will allow the fertilizer to seep out slowly over the next three years. Cages prevent damage caused by waves and seaweed which is caught in the wire mesh. These are anchored in the mud by a metal rod that also doubles as a source of iron for the young mangroves. With a wide, flat tidal plain, growing conditions here are almost perfect and Sato is pleased with the progress his trees are making. Bushes like this in a hectare will uh, produce about uh, over a ton of meat a year, right? And that will uh, contribute a great deal of money and, and food for this village. Whilst the long-term prospects for the village are good, Sato's workers have more immediate needs that can be met by the Manzanar project. As the heat of the day reaches full pitch, the workers head for shade and a bite to eat. In addition to providing these people with a salary, we provide them with a meal each day. Uh, and the reason we do this is that these are very poor people who come to work without eating. And they work all day and then have a meal late at night. So they really appreciate the meal that we provide during the day. By encouraging desert people to plant trees, Sato is hoping to transform the way they see the coastal landscape and what it can offer, vital if Eritrea is to be rebuilt. His hope is that the mangrove tree will transform desert coastlines across the globe and eradicate the problems of poverty and famine in the developing world. The aim of the Manzanar project is to have a country and the local populace with the skills to create food and wealth for themselves. 
We can't do it ourselves. What we need is local people to do it and take the initiative to start this kind of work. Then it will be carried on forever.